Welcome back to my kitchen. Today we're going to be doing some more cooking with potatoes. And because we're doing so many potato things over the years, the last couple of weeks, I have prepared a better storage unit for all of my potatoes. As you can see right here, this is now where we keep all of our potato. Cut. Orange, you glad I didn't say potato? Okay, you're back, I'm back, the potatoes are back. It seems like it would be time to embark on a new potato adventure. What do you say we do that together? Hold my hand and we can go to the potato land. Today I wanted to try making a food that probably is too hard for me. I think I'm choosing a level of difficulty above my pay grade and that's okay because the worst thing that could happen, really, I mean, is the worst, I mean, the worst thing is like I could burn myself cooking these potatoes, but then the burn gets infected. So I have to go in somewhere I don't wanna be and they're treating my wound. And all of a sudden they're like, we've never seen an infection like this. Potato has entered your skin and it's starting to grow potatoes. And then all of a sudden my left arm is a potato. And then I can't even use my left arm because it's a potato, but then I'm like, that's kind of a nice looking potato. So I start cooking with my left arm and then I don't have an arm anymore. And then my whole house burns down. That's the worst that can happen. So we gotta be careful here because there, there are some high stakes. But like the second worst thing that could happen here is that we don't like the recipe. Anyway, the best thing that could happen is that we make something new and it's delicious. And I get to be like, I told you I could do it. And you're like, I didn't think you could. And I'm like, yeah, I could, I told you I did. I remember I said before I started cooking that I believed in it and you didn't. I'm not exaggerating here when I say that there was quite literally a full-blown riot in the comment section on the last video because I didn't show peeling potatoes. Like I'm talking picket signs, half of the place was on fire, I was blocked, I couldn't even comment. Point taken, okay? You need footage of me peeling potatoes. Why? Maybe that's not my business. I'm the potato man, so here I am to serve you the potato content. We have four Yukon gold potatoes. These are actually pretty Pretty beefy Yukon Golds. I mean, the last the last ones I've been working with were like half this size. These are above average size potatoes. Like they're kind of big. Anyway, we're gonna be making gnocchi. Have I said that yet? What I what I'm doing today? How has it taken me this long to say gnocchi? Gnocchi. We're doing gnocchi. You might be thinking to yourself, why is he talking about that time when I was locked out of my house and I couldn't get in? No, I'm not saying gnocchi. I'm saying gnocchi is the name of the pasta. It's a potato pasta and G N O C C. H Y I D. The D is silent. Q at the end. Yoki is how you spell it. And it comes from potatoes and also flour, but it ends up being served like a pasta. I've looked at a few recipes. There's kind of a lot of different ways to do it. People do it different ways. Some promise you that baking the potatoes makes it way easier to turn it into dough. And then some people are like, just boil it. And then some people are like, put it in cold water and then boil it. And then some people are like degrade it a little bit verbally and then peel them and then clean them. So they just know what's about to happen, prepares them and then the texture is right later. So there's a lot of different preparations. I'm gonna try to maybe like mesh a bunch of them together. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna boil these potatoes, okay? And then we're gonna rice them. And then we're gonna mix them with our flour mixture and maybe some other stuff, roll it out, cut it up and then cook some gnocchi. That's the idea. So. If you'd like to make some gnocchi, possibly really poorly, follow along with me. But first things first, we gotta get to peeling these potatoes as you wish. All right, something that I have not been doing a good job of the last few weeks of getting my hands dirty with potatoes is wearing an apron. I have not been wearing my aprons. I think what happened was it had been so long since I was making cooking videos and I got some cool new shirts and I was like, I don't wanna wear these shirts and I want you to look at them so I can enjoy you looking at them because I like looking at them. But then I was like, basically every time I do that, I'm getting my shirt dirty. And even though this will not cover my whole shirt, it will cover part of my shirt. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna be easing our way into apron town with like a little, a little halfsy, little half guy. Yes, sir. Also, we have room for our tools. That's pretty cute. And we're gonna start peeling said taters. So uh, let's do that. All right, here you go. You feel fulfilled? Come Christmas time, maybe I just set up by the fire with like a hundred potatoes and put together a nice little potato peeling Yule log, the weirdest Yule log ever made. 
Is this doing it for you? Listen, I'm here to please, okay? So if you want potato footage of, I mean this, like, knock yourself out. I've actually done that before. Knocked myself out. I was trying to hit a basketball with a baseball bat. I thought it was a great idea. I thought this thing's gonna go so far. It's gonna be so satisfying. The noise it's gonna make is probably gonna be really great. Like a, like a basketball bouncing really hard, but then you hit it over the fence and you've hit a home run with a basketball. But instead, um, the bat just like bounced off the basketball into my forehead. So don't knock yourself out, but like enjoy maybe. Wait, why are those two things synonymous? <sighs> knock, knock yourself out? Who came up with that? All right, potatoes are peeled. Did I miss any spots? Is that gonna be a new thing where timestamps are appearing in the comments of all the spots I missed on potatoes? Well, I don't care. You think I care? I don't care. Put this potato peeler away, keep that thing on me. You know what I'm saying? Actually, that's pretty, let's rinse it off first, okay? I'm trying to keep this thing nice. All right, would this be like a safe way to kind of, just so it's like really ready, quick to use, sort of. Yeah, I'll just keep it here for now. Like I said, I'm following like a bunch of recipes with this potato preparation. And one of the recipes says, okay, you peel the potatoes. It doesn't say anything about cutting them in half, but like, is the... no, I'm gonna listen to the recipe. I'm gonna follow it. So it says we put them in cold water, let them sit in cold water and then put them into a pot and douse them with boiling water and just boil them for 25 minutes. So I'm gonna do that. Exactly, exactly how it says. So BRB, I'm gonna grab some ice. Sheesh. All right. Putting the potatoes in cold, cold water. Don't know what this does. Someone smarter than me thought of it. Did some chemistry probably. We're gonna let those cool. And while that happens, I'm gonna get our boiling water boiling once again, because once that starts making noise, we'll put the cold potatoes in our pot and then douse them in hot boiling water and just keep the boiling going for 25 minutes. And that's that. Also, formal apology to all of the Google homes that I self-destructed last week. I don't know who's apologizing, but someone is or should be. How long do they gotta cool for? Are we just shocking the potatoes? Can't we shock them without ice? I'm not your real father. Did it work? I can't tell if they're shocked. I think they're probably cold. Putting them puppies in here. And now comes the literal boiling water, so. Okay, now we're gonna boil for 25-ish minutes. Hey Google, timer, 25 minutes. And call me Joe from now on. I didn't really go over it at the beginning, but um, for our ingredients, it's basically everything I listed. Plus we're also gonna be using some Miyoko's butter as well as some Violife Parm. We're not really making a sauce for the gnocchi. I kind of wanted the gnocchi to be the focus here. So we're just gonna top it with some parm and cook it in some butter at the end. No sauce, but obviously if you want, you can make your favorite pasta sauce or whatever. Anyway, I gotta clean this mess up. All right, who ordered the potato skin peels? You, over here, yep, here you go. And who ordered the whisk? All right, that is, oh, is yours, here you go. And who ordered the history of gnocchi lesson? You, okay. Gnocchi was initially developed in Northern Italy because the climate, which is cooler up there, was more conducive to growing potatoes rather than grain. I'll leave the check right here. All right, we're gonna check the potatoes. See how tender they are. They've been going for like 20, almost 25 minutes. Okay, well, it looks like they're not perfectly tender yet. I cut them in half because I felt like whole potatoes would take a really long time to cook through. And even cut in half, they're not fully fork tender in 25 minutes. So note, maybe cut them in fourths, I don't know. I think maybe I was using too big of potatoes. My potato math was off. We could have a quick little special appearance from our guest Greyhound of the week. What do you say, Minnie, you wanna say hi? This is me, our Greyhound guest of the week. She will be helping me taste the gnocchi when it's done. Isn't that right, Minnie? What do you think? She's very sweet. Okay, so the potatoes are just about ready. They're basically fork tender. Now I'm going to strain them and move them into a bowl 
like this one, and I'm gonna let them steam themselves up. So I'm gonna put the hot potatoes in here and then bam, steam in it. Someone on the internet told me to do that. So that's what I'm gonna do. I don't know how long for, maybe just a couple of minutes. While we're doing that, we'll prepare our surface with the flour and everything, because we're gonna get gnocchi in fast. And then we're gonna make the dough, then we're gonna roll the dough, cut the dough, fork the dough, boil the dough, pan fry the dough, eat the dough. Don't you think that's a good idea? Let's just do one more fork check. Fork check one, two. Is this thing on? Yeah, they're fork tender. Time to drain these puppies. All right, here we go. And let them steam. Let them cook. How long is this supposed to steam for? Oh, it's already wet, damn. All right, so in a minute here, I'm just gonna take this cloth off. I don't know exactly how long they're supposed to be in here, but we'll just try it. Better, better to try it than not to, is what I always say. Also, if you could hear, I'm starting to pre-boil some water. Okay, we had a discussion last time about always having water ready and boiled, and there were some interesting suggestions about how you do that, but I'm gonna use the hot pot today, or the instant pot, or the electric pot, or the pot that plugs into the wall instead of fire, so that when we're done making our gnocchi, we'll have hot water ready to boil them in. Yeah, I think. All right, we're gonna lift the steam topper off our potatoes and get to ricing. Beautiful, all right? I'm just gonna rice these potatoes directly onto my cutting surface. Hopefully this works, we'll see. Easy, literally easy. For whatever weird reason, I didn't expect those potatoes to be hot, but they are. Okay, potatoes are coming out nice and smooth, which is what we want. Once again, the potato ricer saves the day. It's gonna make a lot of gnocchi, actually. I only used a few potatoes. Also, make sure that little base plate is set before you start pressing, otherwise you will break your ricer. Speaking from maybe some prior experience there. Okay, that is done. Now we get going here. Now we got to make the gnocchi. So we have this flour mixture. It's um, all-purpose flour, all-purpose gluten-free flour with a touch of tapioca flour, as well as some xanthan gum. Because as we know, gluten-free flour just constantly falls short. It doesn't have the binding agency that regular flour does. So I'm just gonna start. Damn, that's hot, man. What do you mean? How am I supposed to use my hands for this? Do more flour. My flour measuring is not good today. Cause again, like the potato sizes, when you're considering what amounts of everything you need for a recipe is like, there's so much variance there. And I don't know how to account for that. I'm just trying to kind of get it all to be one, one big family, one big happy, hot, hot, that's hot family. A little bit more duh or flour rather. And then we have our egg replacer. So I'm gonna add a little water to that to activate it, get our tiny whisk. Okay, that's obviously a sub for um, eggs, which is most of the recipes, what I found they used. Yeah, the goal is to just get this to be like a dough that we can manipulate a little bit, but I don't wanna get too greedy with it because we have kind of an expiration date with the gluten-free flour. But hey, look at this. This is looking kind of nice, actually. I'm gonna flour the cooking surface a little bit. This feels like it's exactly what it's supposed to look like right here. It's nice and doughy. It's stretchy where it needs to be. I think the xanthan gum and the tapioca are working overtime here. Maybe we just get cracking here. All right, let's roll this out. I'm gonna go kind of slow. Wow, this is this is working. Dude, I am, I am hyped up right now. This is actually working. I did not think, all right, maybe I'm speaking too soon, but so successful. Now you take your little thing here and you start chopping off gnocchi size little pillows. We're gonna just lightly flour everything. That was not light, that's fine. We're gonna get some flour on the fork and then this is the hard part. You gotta like roll it down the fork to give it those ridges. I don't know how important it is to get these little ridges but all the gnocchi I've seen has them. This looks easier than it is. I thought this part would be very easy and it's not. So you wanna like roll it down the fork so that it gets those like tiny little ridges in it, which I think look really cool. Um, but you have to just be careful not to break the gluten-free flour if you're making this gluten-free. If you're not making this gluten-free, just ignore all of my complaining and enjoy your freedom of eating whatever the hell you want. It's more difficult than I thought. See, this piece is like basically toast. I don't know. It's like some of the, some of the little pillows are falling apart when I roll them down the fork and some of them are being 
really well behaved. I wonder how my ratios are affecting everything right now because I don't know. I kind of feel like they look dope though. Well, these guys feel like ready to be gnocchi maybe. That's my first batch, okay? All right, so we're gonna get the last of these kind of rolled up, prepped as we'd like, and then we'll move on to the cooking part. We go. Okay, gnocchi has been prepared. It's been rolled, it's been cut. Time to put some hot water in this pot and we boil the gnocchi till they float. Is that how it works? That seems very unscientific, but there we go. Pop them in some boiling water. I'm going to prepare only the VIPs, the ones who look the best, because there are definitely some that were practice gnocchi rolls here. Take some finesse to roll it off the fork. I figured through doing it a bunch, lifting the fork off of the surface helps because then you can kind of get off the end a little bit better. Uh, but sometimes it like puts holes in the gnocchi, so I don't know if that's bad. I also don't know if these are the right size. We're just gonna, we're just gonna send it. So once this is doing a little bubbling, I'll drop the first string team into the water till they float and then we'll get to um, sauteing them in some butter and then we're done. Then we can just eat our tatoes and get out of here. Anyway, how's your day? All right, it's basically boiling. So here we go. Let's submerge the all-star squad. So we're just gonna boil them till they come to the top and float. Oh my God, they're already floating. That's it? That was like 30 seconds. Are you sure about that? I have my doubts, but I'm gonna try to follow the recipe, okay? Put them in a bowl. I don't know. I don't want them to get all mushy. Things are moving. Where's my lighter? Where did I put the lighter? Oh, it's in my hand. Literally in my hand. Okay. Now, gotta grab some butter. This has been sitting out so it's nice and soft, which is perfect. I don't think there's any packaging on that. All right, we're almost there. This is very exciting. They're not really sticking that badly to each other, which was my concern. All right, we're just gonna try to brown these a little bit, get them nice and a good texture to eat. Butter's looking brown a little bit. Gonna put them all in here, keep them separate. And here we go, we're doing yoki. Here, a trusty serving dish. This dish makes everything look good. Wow, I'm like actually really proud of this. Although I don't really see the ridges at this point. Maybe I didn't pronounce them enough. I'm trying to plate these up, but like I don't wanna get too much oil on the plate. Okay, working with something here. All right. All right, gnocchi is finished. Looks a little different than, you know, the recipe photo, but I might've put the cheese on after I was supposed to. I think I was supposed to put them on in the pan, but that's fine. Let's take a bite of our homemade plant-based gluten-free gnocchi. Holy shit, that is good. Oh my God, that is delicious. That is so much better than I thought it was gonna be. It's got like a, perfectly crispy outside, but it's so chewy and soft on the inside. Like I can't even describe to you how perfect the texture happened. It's pillowy. Like you can see, it's definitely got like a nice crispy outside, but when you get on the inside, oh damn it is. Oh, okay, I'm gonna take another good bite here. Dude, that is so good and it doesn't even need anything on it. I literally just put a little cheese. This is amazing. Is this what gnocchi always tastes like? The texture on the inside is fantastic. It's like a warm, chewy, somehow flavorful pillow of deliciousness and potato and pasta at the same time. I did not think my first time making gnocchi would come out even in the same realm as how good this tastes. I'm blown away. S tier food right here. Can't even believe how good it tastes. Look at that. Gnocchi tour, listen to the it's got like a nice, oh, dude, I'm so, so excited about this. And I got hella gnocchi, and more dough. I'm gonna make all of this and eat nothing besides gnocchi for the rest of the week. Anyway, this was a sleeper one for me. This was a sleeper. I did not expect it to taste this good, nor did I expect it to go this well. 
This felt like a recipe where there were a lot of chances that I usually love to take to ruin the recipe and just kind of throw all my hard work into the garbage disposal and press the button, but I didn't. Like I freaking textured my food. Who am I? What even is this? If you like pasta and potatoes and delicious foods in general, make this, you will not be disappointed. Don't even know what else to say. Just went, went perfect. Maybe put the cheese on when the gnocchi's still in the pan so it has a chance to melt a little bit. Um, We lost one. Here you go. You can have a bite. Here you go. This one, this one's up there for me. This one's up there. Cause I love pasta, but I also love potatoes. And I just didn't think the texture would be like my favorite, but it's got both. It's got the crispiness and the chewiness. It's like, and it's not like, I don't know. Something about this dough makes the inside actually chewy. Was that my sous chef? Peach, come here. All right, I was gonna give you some gnocchi, but you're lost, fine. You don't have to, you don't have to come here. Anyway. Thanks for watching and joining me on this excursion to Northern Italy where we made gnocchi pasta with potatoes. What a great idea. If you enjoyed and you decided to follow along, make sure you, you know, throw one at the wall for me, but enjoy the food. And maybe the one you throw at the wall would be the best tasting one anyway. I'm gonna pop a couple of these in my fanny pack on my next walk and just start chewing on them while I go. It's like violently delicious. The hell, I'll see you next week probably for something not nearly as good as this. I don't know what happened, but it went perfectly. I'm gonna be giving away this completely empty butane fuel tank. Pretty much illegal to ship this as is to most of the states. So I'll be sprinting to your uh, delivery address with that in hand. I'll see you next week for some more potatoes. Thanks for watching. Yoki man, who would have thought even? Yes, I'd like to order some potatoes, please. Uh, like 70. Can you deliver them in the next 10 minutes? Can you? That's a whisk.